Hi, I'm Captain Brian from U.S. Captain's Training. Today we want to talk about knot theory, we want to talk about the diameter of a line, we're going to talk to you about the simple parts of a knot, the first part being a trap, second part being a bite. You put a bite in a trap and close it down, you have a simple knot called a trucker's hitch, but small variations off the bite and trap, you can make different knots. If I take this line and put it through my bite, I have a bowline. I'll show you several different knots using the bite and trap method. So, let's get started. Let's look at the square knot. All trap and bite knots are variations of the square knot. The interesting thing about a square knot is there is no trap, bite on bite. So here we have one bite, and now to make the other bite, the rabbit comes out of the hole, goes around the back of the tree and back down the hole. Notice that we have bite on bite, no trap. The purpose of this knot is when their extreme loads are put on this line, instead of the knot failing or the line parting, it simply slowly pays out, but does not part. To tie a sheet bend, we have a bite. The rabbit comes out of the hole, goes around the back of the tree, and instead of going back down the hole, we go under the log. We now have a bite and a trap called the sheet bend. Remember, all bite and trap knots are variations off the square knot. We have a square knot here. To tie a sheet bend, all I have to do is take the, a line out of the hole and go under it, under itself. Now, this we're going to tie a double sheet bend, which is I just bring it around one more time and bring it around through the hole once more, pull it tight, I have a double sheet bend. I will now tie a fisherman's bend or an anchor bend, either name, and this is a way to tie a line to metal so it will not chafe. So we come up to the back and we go around the ring three times. We're here now. We go under the line and then through the centers, tighten her up, and then one more half hitch. This is so the line does not chafe on the metal, a fisherman's bend or an anchor bend. Now I am going to tie a bowline. Remember, a bowline is a variation of the square knot and is the same knot as a sheet bend tied in reverse order. We have here our square knot. What we do to make a sheet bend is take the tail out and put it under itself. Now we have, instead of bite on bite, we have a bite and a trap. This ties two lines together. Now to tie a bowline, we do it in reverse order. We tied a bite, a trap around a bite. This time we're going to tie a bite around a trap. So here's our trap. The rabbit comes out through the hole, goes around the back of the tree, and down the hole again. Do you see the bite forming through the trap? And we pull the trap close. Now we have a bowline, a non-slipping line, non-slipping loop on the end of the line. This is a sheet bend which ties two lines together but if you look they're the exact same knot tied in reverse order. This is a bowline on a bite. It is a bowline in the center of a line. So just pick the place where you want that bowline, double the line up and it's the same tie to this point. The rabbit goes, we have the, we have the trap, we have a rabbit comes 
out of the hole around the back of the tree. But at this point, the rabbit eats the hole, the tree, and everything. We just bring it over, and we have a bowlin on a bite. Bowlin in the center of a line. This is a French bowling. It's designed to throw to a man in the water so he can put his torso through one loop and, his, and sit on the other. Get yourself a long length of line. First we do a trap. Now we're going to form the bite. We go around the trap one whole time. That's our first loop. And as we come back on the second loop, we're gonna go under, the rabbit comes out of the hole, goes around the back of the tree, and then back down the hole, we have a French bowling. I am going to tie two half hitches, go around the post, and what we'll do is we'll come under, through, bring it back under, and through again we have two half hitches. This tightens against the post. This is how you tie a boat to a post with two half hitches. But if we look at this knot, the curious thing is, if this is a clove hitch, it's a cleat hitch. It's all the hitches. Two half hitches is when I tie the line to itself. Okay, we're going to tie a clove hitch. A clove hitch is a half hitch that is used on a horizontal object. It is not used on a vertical object because it will not stay tight. So we're going to use this to tie something like a fender off to a horizontal object. So first of all, we go around, up and over. We come up one side of the line. Now we hold that open. We come up and over the other side of the line, and we come back through. This is called a clove hitch for holding weights vertically against a horizontal object. It keeps the knot tight. Clove hitch. Now I'm going to demonstrate a cleat hitch. I look at the angle of the cleat. I want to go to the sharpest angle. This would be considered the back of the cleat. So I take the rope to the back of the cleat, go around the front of the cleat. Now at this point, I can do a 360 and trap the line, or I can start my cleat hitch, either one. If I need more bite in it, I will go around. I've done a 360, it's holding the line already. And then I start my first figure eight loop, and then on my second figure eight loop, all I want to do is make a bite and turn it over on itself. And what I have is I have a trap and I have two bites, lower bite and the upper bite with a trapping device on top of it. This is a cleat hitch. All right, we're going to tie a rolling hitch. Now a rolling hitch is very similar to a clove hitch. As we come over the object, but on one side, instead of passing over like a clove hitch, we stay to this side and roll over one more time, and then we come across like a clove hitch. This is called a rolling hitch. The side that has been doubled up on is the side that you don't want the rope to slide on. You can see I can put weight on the side now, and it doesn't go anywhere. This is a rolling hitch. I can also tie a rolling hitch to a line by using the same method. I can come under twice and then cross over. I've got a rolling hitch on a line now and I'll tighten it up real tight and this rolling hitch is going to prevent this knot from sliding down the line. See how it bites in? And it won't slide, it will still slide this way, but it will not slide this way.
Now I will tie a stopper knot. This knot is designed so it does not pay out of an eye or a shackle. The way we do that, it's at the end of the line, so we bring it through the shackle or the eye. At this point, we make a loop. The rabbit goes in front of the hole, around the back of the tree, and back down the hole. This is called a figure eight or a stopper knot. Once I back on it, it's designed so it will not pay through an eye. We hope this demonstration has helped you understand basic knot theory. Remember, the reason we tie bites into traps is so the line doesn't fail under heavy loads. This is Captain Brian. Thanks for watching. Join us on the web for more information.